Welcome to the Love Lab Podcast, a safe place to get real about sex. Whether you're man, woman, single or couple, this is the show for you because, well, sex matters. We are your hosts, Kevin Anthony and Céline Remy. Welcome back to the Love Lab Podcast. This is episode 64 and it's titled Sexual Sovereignty and Shame-Free Body Fluids with Jules Kaz... Kaz <laughs> Desu. <laughs> yes. Darn, I almost had that. <laughs> I practiced it before we started. Just for, for those of you listening, it's not spelled anything like it's pronounced, so... I, I was looking right at it when I said it and, or when I attempted to say it. It just didn't work out so well. I think we're going to redo it anyway because you can't botch somebody's name. <laughs> oh, believe me. It happens all the time. I don't know how I learned how to spell it. Or say it. <laughs> well, oh, well, well, fine. Then we're going to stick with it, I guess. <laughs> stick with it. <laughs> oh my goodness today we have a special guest jules kaz de Sue. apparently i don't know why it was easier for me to learn it <laughs> and uh, she is a central entrepreneur and he's devoted to women's expanded pleasure and power in bed and beyond in 2015 she launched her business venus matters creator of the Venus mat, the most, um, the most beautiful and environmentally conscious bed mat on the market. Mm, yes. So I'm really excited to be talking about the Venus mat, about sexuality, about sexual sovereignty and releasing shame around body fluids, diving in uh, with our guest. And before we do that, we just want to do a shout out to our sponsor because this episode is brought to you by Power and Mastery the most complete sexual training for men to develop your stamina, boost your confidence, and enhance your sexual abilities. You can find all about Power and Mastery at powerandmastery.com. So get ready to change your sex life and go check this out. So here we are. Welcome, Jules, to our Love Lab podcast. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here with you both. <laughs> Yeah. So before we dive into the questions, I do just want to let the listeners know that um, we don't actually get anything from this. Like, you know, Jules isn't a paid sponsor of ours or anything. This whole episode happened because we mentioned her product because we personally own one. And then Jules just reached out to us and we connected and we were like, wow, that, that was really cool. So Let's, let's have you on the show. And so I just like to be really transparent about that stuff with people that we were just genuinely interested in having a conversation with Jules. And I want to add too that because Jules loves us and she loves our audience, she's got a special gift and coupon for all of you interested in getting one of those mats. So stick with us. We'll tell you all about this. That's right. <laughs> So many of our listeners may not know what the heck are those Venus mats and okay, the hearing, okay, she's created these mats that can help you to have like shame-free sex around your body fluids. Um, and it's like, this can sound weird for some people. And my very first question here was like, hey, why did you create this company? Like how the heck did you come up with such a business plan i'm gonna create these like mats for people to have this great sex at any time during their cycle <laughs> it is a, a curious one i have two origin stories actually uh the the more personal one was at an, a sultry afternoon in new york city i'm on my period i have a lover i want to have sex and i open my my laundry closet door to find an old towel, which is of course what most people use when they want to have sex on their periods. And I stopped for a moment and thought, why don't I have something special for this moment? And underneath that question, there was like a little bit of shame, which surprised me because I was raised by hippies. I was told that my period was this beautiful, empowering thing that I would become a woman when I had my period. I prayed to get my period. I was really excited about it. And I never had a boyfriend who had trouble or had any kind of squeamishness around having sex on uh, when I was having my period. But I touched something that afternoon that literally stopped me in my tracks. And I couldn't figure out why there wasn't something on the market for something obviously more than just I needed. And it then spent, I spent a couple of years in, 
questioning my girlfriends, wondering if looking on the market to see if there was anything out there. I could I found one other sex blanket, but it really wasn't designed for blood. And I knew, of course, there were lots of other reasons I could create this product. So finally, years down the road, I got my first prototypes out and launched on Indiegogo and pre-sold my first production run. And that's uh, four years ago now. Oh, that's so cool. Um, so I have another question that's coming up from you sharing this. Uh, so you came up with the design yourself or did you hire people to help you create those super absorbent and beautiful mats? Ah, I wanted it to be circular because I wanted it to be sacred. I wanted it to be uplifting. I called the business Venus Matters because as uh, the, the Roman goddess Venus is, is not only here for sexual love, but also prosperity and desire and beauty. So I wanted something that really wasn't just a practical product, but also laid sacred ground for women. And that made me start investigating fabrics and, and um, it really has taken a long time to create something that I can stand behind both environmentally and socially. So when I say it's the world's most beautiful bed mat, I mean that also in a sustainable way. So I make sure that all of our fabrics are safe. They are made either in the United States or Canada, and they are certified safe. They're also sewn right here in Colorado, so I know that the labor that goes into it is not um, anything that you know I would not want to be supporting. So the beauty goes in, in both directions, both the practical, pragmatic, ecological impact, and also the more subtle, spiritual impact. Um, I think that, yeah, I designed it myself, but it's taken a lot of years to really dial in the product. And I'm still actually in the process of creating some beautiful new offerings. I've got my first run of organic cotton flannel coming out with a, a wild leopard spot. It just came to my sewers this morning in Denver. So we're hoping to get that in a few weeks out to customers. That's cool. So I have a question also, because you, you said that when you were looking around in the market, trying to find something that was specific for blood, and you really couldn't find it. Now, I know, like, I've had different lovers even before Celine that have used different approaches for both uh, uh, period sex and female ejaculation. And I'm just curious, like, how yours is specific to uh, dealing with blood, like what makes it different than say some of the other solutions people have tried, some of which worked, some of which really didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, the other part for me that personally inspired me to start the business was I had, uh, I had fibroids um, in my twenties and thirties that had, had me having very heavy flows. So in the middle of the night, I would often have breakthrough bleeding, which meant I was up scrubbing sheets clean at four in the morning. And I just got so tired of that. I wanted to have something beautiful, but also dark colors, colors that could help hide stains or help, you know, make it sort of not be as apparent that you had a little blood stain there. Sometimes they're hard to get out. And this way you just don't have to worry about that. All the irony is I got my second round of, uh, of samples about a month before my period actually ended. So I only was able to sleep on a Venus mat during my period a couple of times. But the experience for me personally was just like feeling uplifted, that, that sense of sovereignty, feeling like there was nothing to worry about. I was taken care of. And it wasn't just an ugly towel or a hospital pad. It was something that made me feel special. It made me feel more like a queen. And that experience is also really important part of my business. Mm, I love that. It's true that when I stumbled upon your mats, one of the things that attracted me, we got the rose one. So it's this beautiful, we got the deluxe one, the biggest one possible with this gigantic rose in the middle. And that's the first thing that I thought was, this is great. We're not going to see the stains very much. And I wasn't particularly looking for something for uh, period sex. Um, but I was looking more for female ejaculation because for me, that's, I don't bleed that much, uh, but I do female ejaculate quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I was looking for something where, you know, I used some other 
different types of mats or things that are not specifically created for female ejaculation, but over time, you literally see a stain. Even if you wash, you know, like within a day or two of like having used it. And I was like, I like the fact that it has a pattern because then it's like, you know, it, it, it looks better. And the other thing I loved was that it, it, it really looks good. Like we always have it on the top of our bed. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that I've realized is, well, it's a great conversation starter, right? Because I'm sure it's the same for you when people walk in and they see those mats probably. What is that for? What is that for? You have some on the couch, I'm on the bed. Let Let me me tell you. (laughs) (laughs) Here, sit on my Venus mat. (laughs) But it also, I think, created the mood. Like the fact that it's really pretty because what I had done in the past, I had gotten ones that were white that are more for like, you know, for babies for when they pee in bed. And then I had like colored them, dyed them to make it something a little more pretty. But it never got like to the level of looking up to my standards. But with the Venus mat, it's so pretty. And it's kind of like, I think it makes you want to have more sex. <laughs> Oh my God, I and I'm like, yeah, we had a good time on that, Matt. Let, let's do that again. <laughs> well, I will say this, uh, although it doesn't make me want to have more sex because I'm not sure that's possible. <laughs> 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 but, but what I noticed that it does do is that when it's there, um, you're not thinking about, oh, I'm going to get the sheets messy or whatever. So you can just let go more mm-hmm. and just be more okay with whatever happens. And there are times sometimes where like we're having sex either in another room or something and it was spontaneous and we don't have the mat and you're like, oh, oh I feel like a jack. Oh, but we don't have the mat, you know? Uh-huh. And you're like, Damn. <laughs> yeah. Apparently you need one in every room. <laughs> <laughs> Those are some of my favorite emails I get from customers, women who say, I ejaculated for the first time on your Venus mat. I'm so excited. I mean, it's such an honor to be let into people's personal private experiences in their bodies and sexually. I just, I love thinking sometimes how many people around the world are making love on a Venus mat right now. You know, <laughs> like, Ooh, how much love making is going on? You know, I'm curious too, now that you mentioned that, that you, you actually get uh, letters from customers. Like, has anybody ever shared a story with you where, you know, somehow this mat affected them in a, in a certain way? Mm-hmm. Very much so. One of my favorite stories was early on, my first production run had been finished and I had a little party in my Boulder apartment to invite the local uh, customers and friends who had bought their Venus mats to come pick them up. So one lady had bought just a smaller cotton mat and she'd just given birth. Her baby was a few months old. And I had the rose magic mat, the the one you have, on on a bed in another room. So she came into that room and she saw the deluxe rose magic Venus bat and she started to cry and she she just said this is too much information but I have to tell you since I gave birth my whole relationship to my body has changed I looked at my vagina in a mirror the other day I, I had new conversations with my mother around the abuse I had as a child and she she just these beautiful tears sprouted from her eyes and she said I have to have this mat too for me she said when I lay down this mat, sex will be on my terms. Ooh. Oh my God, I got <laughs> chills. I, I did too. And at that moment, I made the intention that sexual abuse would never occur on a Venus mat. That mm. there would always be sacred, holy, protected space for women and men to have sovereign sexual experiences. Mm -hmm. Our Humming Dragon Venus mat, which was a beautiful detail of an image from Andrew uh, Android Jones, was given to us, and I'm able to actually give 10% of all those sales to end sex trafficking. It's a big, fierce dragon with with Mm -hmm. hummingbirds coming out of it. So it seemed like the perfect image to like stop that uh, the abuse of of girls and boys and and really humans of of all ages across the globe, you know, using sex in, in dark ways. So. That's a big part of my mission. It's, it's funny because we're here talking about a product and in some ways it might seem, oh, you know, it's just another product. But for me, it, it's just a, it, it's a placeholder for my, my purpose and mission in life, which is to heal the false split between spirit and matter. You know, it, the body is where we get to experience ecstasy and 
and even potentially uh, the divine. So if we can, if we can heal that false split on this planet right now, which we desperately need to do, I feel like the rest of the problems facing us will also be healed. We will stop abusing children and women and the planet itself. We'll start to be in right relationship with everyone when we're in relationship with our own body temples. So that's, that's really the underlying force. It's kind of an excuse for me to write about my favorite topic. <laughs> <laughs> well, we love that. I mean, any, anytime you can tie a business to a broader goal, that's a good thing. Like even in what we do, you know, our goal isn't just like to teach people how to have better sex on their period. Like there's a larger goal of sexual empowerment there. Mm. Because if people take control of their own sexuality, they can take control of their lives. And I love that you too have a bigger mission as well. In fact, we have your mission statement here, which says Venus Matters is part of a growing movement normalizing menstruation and supporting sexual sovereignty. We like to call it the pleasure revolution. And I love mm -hmm. that. Like the, this idea of sexual sovereignty and how that ties in with the split. So mm -hmm. I was wondering, like, that's a great segue. Let's dive a little bit more into that topic. Yes. This idea that there's a split. Like, what do you mm -hmm. mean exactly when, when you're saying there's a split between? Well, it's funny. So much of what we consider spiritual or religious has to do with renunciating the body. We have to renounce our desires. Even in the Buddhist or the Christian traditions, there's the sense that the body and sexuality is something that has to be suppressed, denied, controlled, and that spirit and the, and, and the godly realms are these pure, non-physical, non-desire-based realms. And I think that it's, it's not that it's not true, it's just that it's, it's used incorrectly. It's not, it's not the whole story. And I think this, the healing of the split has to do with finding a way to return to our own innate sense of what is pleasurable. And when you, when you get that sense of what's truly pleasurable, not what's addicted or hungry or, or insecure, not, not desire that is, the, you know, our, our consumerist world is filled with using beautiful bodies or, or sexy women to sell things. Not that kind of desire. The kind of desire that comes from your deepest, deepest core, the way life itself moves through us. Like, what do I, what am I drawn to? What do I love? What feels good? I think we can trust that. And we're, we're not taught to trust that as children. And our society contorts that. We can either become super religious or disconnected from our bodies or addicted to, you know, to a, a kind of unsatisfying pleasure. But connecting to that sovereign sense of desire as holy and my body as a holy temple, that to me is just really exciting. And sexual sovereignty to me is all about experiencing that original sense of ourselves as innocent, erotic expressions of the divine. Yeah. Oh, I have so much to share on that, but I want to make go, sure so go that it, Kevin. have some time to talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so this, this, um, this idea of being disconnected from our bodies and our sexualities. I have two main thoughts on that. And the first one is, is that uh, on, a, on a let's give them the benefit of the doubt kind of a, a, a track, um, that that's a misinterpretation of the spiritual teaching. Mm. Because I think ultimately what they were going for was just trying not to be distracted so that they could focus on spiritual practice. And I think that that may have evolved into uh, somehow that that was bad. Mm -hmm. that, that if we somehow stayed in our lower physical bodies that we'd never be able to connect with God. And that's just nonsense. But on another level, I think there's a little bit more nefarious uh, aspect to it which is uh, the one of control. And we've talked about this on the show before, but whether you call it Ji, Ching, Prana, life force energy, you know, whatever it is, your sexual energy is really 
a massive part of who you are. It's, it's that life force within you from which everything else is created. Mm. So if you take somebody's sexuality out of who they are, you are disempowering them. Absolutely. And, and I think that that was very intentionally done by certain groups. Mm. Yes. Right. Because if you can disconnect a person from their own sense of power, then they have to find an authority outside of themselves to bow down to and to make sure that they're in the right place at the right time. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So what I love is that the mat through the symbolisms and the, the way it's shaped, designed, brings that forth that it's, it reminds you that you are the one that it's like you have you you have all the keys you have everything that you need um and i was thinking that when we chose to have the mat we actually got it as our wedding present uh because we had some people who uh, were guests who offered us some money specifically to order some sex related toys yeah that's true they they wrote in the card you know this is to be used only for sex toys exactly <laughs> and we were like you know to be honest, we don't really do sex toys. It's not our thing because uh, we have so much fun with our bodies. And we were like, what can we find uh, that would be fitting the description? Because we wanted to honor their wishes, right? And so this is how we found the mat. So for us, we got the mat literally just a few days after we got married. And then it's been like this beautiful rose, red rose, and they're sitting on her bed. And so I think it's also beautiful because it, it reminds us of like the moment when we got it, that sudden mm -hmm. celebration of like our honeymoon, our, our being together, this time we consciously chose to be a partner for life together. And so I love that, that that is what the match is about for us mm -hmm. but it can also be just like for the women that you talked about where for her it was just about like that new connection with her body where sex was only going to be on her term and i'm curious too because i see that this can speak a lot to the women and since we do have a man here like i was curious like how if, if it has affected you or changed like how we have sex or how you, how you see sex because we have the mat? Um, you know, maybe a little bit less for me as a guy, uh -huh. but you know, I do love the idea that like when we, when we show up to the bed to make love, it's not just like a messy bed or it's not just like, you know, some of the things that past partners use. Like I had one partner years ago who was a huge female ejaculator. And at the time, all she had were these little disposable things. They were like, you know, just a, a very small, maybe, you know, two feet by two feet, if that. I think they were even smaller than that. Those little hospital pads. Yeah, it's like, like precisely place her <laughs> ass on the pad in the right spot, you know. And then they would, they would crinkle and make noise and like... Like all of that stuff kind of took away from the experience mm -hmm. a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, where it was like, ah, there's, there's, we got to think about things. It's kind of sort of taking us uh, out of the moment, putting us in our heads. And what I love about the mat is when you do show up and it's there, it's beautiful. It, uh, it's big. <laughs> so there's plenty of space. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to get into your head about, oh, are we on the pad? Are we not on the pad? <laughs> It's just, you just show up and it's there and it's beautiful. So, and yeah. I know sometimes when I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, I don't want to do laundry. And you're like, just take the pad, you know? And like, <laughs> sometimes it just like helps us. So, in a way, it helps you to have better sex because as soon as I'm able to let go, where you're like, you just even grab the pad and put it underneath and you're like, it's there. Don't think about it. Let go. Exactly. Right. So, it makes for better sex for us both. So, that's, that's really cool for that. I, you know, well, it's, <laughs> so I, I grew up in a uh, mostly Italian family and, and our solutions to uh, problems were usually just like, well, just give more to it. Right. So like, you know, we joke all the time about, um, you know, uh, the amount of food that we have, you know, and she's like, but, but I was like, then we'll just order more. We'll just make more, you know? <laughs> and this is sort of the same philosophy goes yeah. into the pad, which is like sometimes she'll say, well, I don't really want to do laundry or I'd really love to female ejaculate, but we don't have that. And I'm just like, just get the pad. 
just use your pad. <laughs> and, and when we had a small pad, the solution was, let's get a bigger pad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I love the, the practicality combined with the rituality of it. Mm. I think a lot of people are missing a sense of the ritual in their lives because so much has become secularized in our lives. So having just a little reminder that any of us can create sacred space at any time. Mm. We get to create our own experiences and lovers, good lovers create great experiences for each other. So that's, it's all in support of that. Honored that this has served you in such, in such a beautiful, delightful way. So since you're talking about that lovers, um, I'd love to see like, how would you introduce your new mat to a new lover? Like, ah. <laughs> I was curious because a couple of my customers uh, mentioned that, you know, they had the mat and then they changed lovers and they like, did the new lover want to experience the lovers, the mat with the old lovers juju on there? <laughs> they needed a new mat. And of course, other lovers are like, using them for orgies. So <laughs> it's a, it, we run this, the, the gamut. Um, I, am, I am in a long-term relationship, so I've only had one lover on my mat. <laughs> Personally, yeah. But the other favorite comments I get from people are uh, women whose water breaks on the mat. So some women will bring their Venus mats to the hospital or if they're home birthing, they can sleep on the mat and they don't have to worry about that flood of fluid that comes when the water breaks and yeah that's uh, another big part of it but for female ejaculation too it's just it's just incredible to me that even until i believe it was spring of last year the uk forbade porn to be created around female ejaculation they considered it to be illegal uh, you know somehow immoral <laughs> and yet 10 to even 50%, I think far more women would be female ejaculators if they didn't worry about the mess, if it was normalized. And of course, I'm sure you know, but I, and your, maybe your audience does as well, but the tantric traditions consider that fluid to be very, very powerful, Amrita. And that is something that I just love supporting more women to feel the freedom, of course, along with without the pressure to squirt if they don't squirt. But that's... Um, just part of this so needed revolution in in body fluids. Like why in the world in the 21st century are women embarrassed about their periods? And yet they are. And, and in parts of the world, it's still very dangerous to have your period. I mean, you can be, you, you can't touch certain Hasidic Jewish men if you're on your period. You can't go into temples. You can't cook. You, you have to go sleep with the cows. This is still happening on our planet. And, and even in the West, there are poor, poor women who are struggling to get sanitary pads. And it's just, it, it just doesn't need to be this way. And if we learn how to take care of our bodies and each other, we're going to solve all the big problems on the planet right now. So, mm -hmm. You know, it, it reminds me as you were just saying that, right? And we say this all the time, but everything starts from within. So there's all these world problems out there that you just mentioned and how do we even begin to address them is we got to, we got to do the inner work ourselves, right? Cause if we're not already comfortable with our bodies and our body fluids and how to take care of our bodies, how in the world are we going to solve that for anybody else? Yeah, absolutely. I love too that you brought different use for the mat and because we're talking too about body fluids, right? So we talked about menstruation, we talked about female ejaculation, but you're like, okay, like we're, we're giving birth and when the water breaks, or I, I know we saw on your side too that your sister who passed away from breast cancer, but also had this um, urostomy and use the butterfly mat so that she would feel comfortable if there was any leaks while she slept and i'm like like this is amazing because we, we are looking at it through all the cycles of life yes birth to death and that at all time the fluids and what happens with our body is welcome and is sacred and is beautiful and because i was imagining too like the, your sister at this time in her life of the transition and having the butterflies underneath and just kind of like having this as a symbol. I was like, how powerful, you know, that is. So I love how we can really use this for so many 
mm. our lives. And of course, we are a sex love relationship podcast, but hey, we, we'll, we'll talk about, you know, passing away. We'll talk about giving birth. This is all part mm. of life. They do call it le petit mort, the, the little death of the orgasms and the big death that we'll all one day face. I have actually imagined Venus mats to be used on, in hospice and at, at death because, of course, even at that time, the human body deserves to feel elevated and, and that to, to remember that it's a temple. And so I am going to be making square ones because it's necessary to have corners to help change pads for people who are dying so that they can be lifted easily. But yes, my sister's love of her Venus mat is a, a very tender, precious memory of mine. And she was such an open, loving, gregarious woman that I feel safe in sharing her story because she would like, tell them, Jules, tell them how much I liked it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great story. <laughs> I, I love that you have all these different uh, visions of, the, of your business, of where your company can go. Uh, and what I would love is just kind of like tell our listeners uh, where they can find more about uh, your, your products, the Venus mats, and then uh, tell them all about the special coupon you created for all our listeners. Sure, sure. So the website is called venusmatters.com. And right now, I am actually looking for wholesale clients. I, you can only buy it online right now. So this is the store to go to, venusmatters.com. And I believe the little uh, coupon I created for you is the Love Lab, no space, all caps, and that's $15 off any mat. I do have a couple of specials going on right now, though, because I have a, my printer here in Denver made some mistakes on some of the deluxe Venus mats. So I'm selling a couple of seconds. I have oh, a dozen or so left of them of both the Rose Magic and the Humming Dragon Venus mat. So those are just $99. So I won't be able to apply the $15 off on that because that's already super rock bottom price. But $15 off on any of the other mats. And I should have that wild Venus mat up soon as well. Ooh, how exciting. Um, do you have any uh, last words like of like wisdom mm. that you want to leave our audience with? <laughs> mm. I guess for me, I, I am just so honored to be a part of supporting women and men in their embodiment and to free ourselves up from all the shoulds and woulds and have tos and to, to arise in our own bodies, in the throne of our own bodies inside and, and be sovereign in our lives at this amazing, tumultuous time where pleasure is sometimes our, our only refuge and what a precious, sacred thing it is to be able to have pleasure in such wild times on the planet. So spreading that love to me is just everything. And I'm so grateful to be doing that here with you. Yes, more love, more love. More love. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Jules, for being, for being here. Um, all of you listening, go to venusmatters.com. Uh, use your coupon, the Love Lab, and uh, we hope this was inspiring and you can't wait to have more juicy, sexy time. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Bring Thank you, you, Jules. Thank you. <laughs> all right, everybody, that's all the time we have on this episode, and we will see you next week. We hope you liked this episode of the Love Lab podcast. If you enjoyed this show, leave a comment and share it with your friends. And if you want more, we have an entire digital library with the best sex tips and relationship advice at CelineRemy.com. That's C-E-L-I-N-E-R-E-M-Y.com. So join us in the sex vault to continue this adventure. Thanks for listening. And remember, you're amazing. <laughs>